Welcome to the Flash Array Architecture Series. I'm Sandeep. And I'm Chad. In this segment, we're going to cover the Flash Array Architecture Overview. One of the best ways we've found is walking through the life cycle of an I.O. to illustrate the Flash Array Architecture. Chad's going to kick us off with a hardware overview. Awesome. So as you can see here in these beautifully drawn lines, we have the front of a Flash Array chassis at the top with four NVRAM devices, up to four. You can have 20 drive modules in the front of the chassis, which can either be SAS for our Flash Array M or NVMe with our Flash Array X. On the back of the chassis, we have two power distribution units as well as two controllers, which are uh, swappable, uh, fully modular from an architecture perspective. We run active active on these controllers and reserve one controller worth of performance to ensure full performance capabilities in the event of a failure. Down below here, we have one of our expansion shelves, which have 24 drive modules within it. When we look at the lifecycle of an I.O., one of the first things is you've got a host, and you would have created and exported a volume or a set of volumes to a host or set of uh, hosts there. All you need to know to create a storage volume is the capacity as well as the host that you're going to export that volume to. The storage volumes on the flash array are completely virtualized, so there's no tuning required. There's no need to manage drive groups or RAID groups. There's no need to manage pools or caching or controller node to uh, storage volume affinity. Everything is just handled automatically. The first step here, now uh, that we have a host, is we're going to dual connect it to each of our controllers here. That host, of course, is going to send us some data. So we'll throw a few blocks out there. We have an 8K I.O., let's say a 16K I.O., and a 32K I.O. We don't have any fixed blocks within our file system structure. And so we are very agile in the way that we handle those and optimize the system for any block size. And what one of the things that means is there's no tuning required even at the block size of a database or a virtual volume or a file system. The flash array and purity operating environment are automatically uh, auto-aligned. So then the first step, as soon as the data hits the controller buffers, is we run a checksum. This ensures that we have a view into what the data looked like when it was originally written. In the event that the data doesn't have the uh, same checksum, we will rebuild that from parity down the line. The next step is to do pattern removal. This looks for large strings of ones and zeros and removes them from the, the data blocks themselves. The third step is to do compression. This uh, reduces the overall data set so that we can have a smaller form factor in our NVRAM devices. The next step is to move the data to NVRAM. We do this to protect for any sort of failure or power failure within the array. These are uh, copied to NVRAM in a mirrored fashion, so at least two of the uh, NVRAM devices get the data set. It's also in both of the DRAM uh, buffers through an RDMA transfer between the two controllers. Uh, once the data is there, we then can acknowledge to the host that we've uh, fully persisted the data uh, from their perspective, and so they can move on. So the next step is looking for deduplication. We will go and check the hash table to see if there's a match on, in the hash table. And uh, if there is a match, we will then go and do a read of the entire data that's been persisted to backend flash and do a byte for byte comparison to ensure 100% that there is a match. If uh, the duplicate match uh, succeeds, then we will go and update the metadata, uh, the reference count on it. And uh, at that point, if the entire uh, data was a duplicate, uh, that life cycle of that write is complete. If only a portion of the data was duplicate, we'll take the remaining uh, portion of the data, and then we'll go and uh, compress it. The next step is taking that data and putting it into RAID 3D segments. Think of a segment as a large container. They're multi-megabytes in size, and they store both data as well as parity. FlashRay uses dual parity so that it can transparently tolerate up to two failures uh, within a RAID group. The final step is to persist that data onto Flash. 
That segment as it fills up is then flushed out to the backend flash and it's written with data encryption applied. And that completes the lifecycle of a write I.O. Awesome. So now let's dig into the lifecycle of a read I.O. So the first step is to look up the metadata. We use the fastest mechanism to be able to retrieve this data, whether it be from parity rebuilds or actually accessing the SSDs directly. Once we have all of the pages, we then can go in and decompress. Once the data is decompressed, we then can go and check the checksum. If the checksum comes back valid, we can go ahead through the process of sending the data back to the host. If it doesn't come back valid, we then can go rebuild it from parity to make sure we have the exact same data that the original host wrote to the system. So our last step here is send data to host. And that completes the lifecycle of a read I.O. One final thing we should also mention is that there's additional background traffic in addition to the host I.O. based on how the flash rate manages the backend flash. Purity uses a append-only write format. So as the data is overwritten, that new data is stored in different parts of the flash. As you can imagine, the existing segments can become stale over time. Purity continuously looks for segments with a level of emptiness. It opens them up, copies the data that we want to keep over to new segments, and then re-persists that on the backend flash. The freed up segment it becomes available for reuse for storing new data. In addition, there's deep reduction that is uh, happening in the background. Combined with inline dedupe and compression, what that means is that the flash array customer install base is achieving 5 to 1 data reduction and 11 to 1 total reduction within provisioning included. So there you have it, a quick overview of the flash array architecture. And in the next segment, we'll dive deeper into the hardware, NVMe, and global flash management. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thanks.